Hey, Mr. Garage here. And uh, just waking up, kind of excited. I got a new generator in the garage and we're gonna be checking this thing out. It is the Ryobi, I'm gonna have to look at my notes here, RYI 2322VNM. It's an 1800 running watt generator, which means it'll provide 15 amps of AC current for your appliances or whatever you want to do with it. Now this is a little on the small side for generators that I would normally want to run for say a travel trailer or you know something like that. Uh, 15 amps isn't enough to run a standard 13.5 uh, kBTU AC unit without running the generator to 100% of its capacity. Um, I don't like doing that. You're better off just buying a bigger gin for that kind of thing. But for trips where you don't need to run an air conditioner and you want to run everything else in your trailer or your, your RV or whatever you're doing, this has plenty of power and it's compact, it's lightweight. So anyways, we're gonna be taking a look at this and um, I'm gonna be doing an open box, but not the traditional open box because that's lame. You're not gonna watch me take it out of the box. That's stupid. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna show you all the stuff that it came with and then I'm gonna do what I always do with products. So I wanna know how it works. So, and, and where everything is inside of it and kind of take it apart. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, I'm gonna throw it up on the table here. We're gonna pull all the panels and take a look at what's underneath those panels. And uh, yeah, let's get started on that. Looking forward to it. All right, so we got this thing unboxed and it is nice. This thing just really looks good. Um, it's got a nice control panel layout. We have our auto idle button. We have two USB um, plugs underneath there and whatever. Ready at 2.1 amps. We have two Edison plugs that say 20 amps on them each. I don't know why they have that. This generator can only do 15 amps continuous. We have our parallel port um, or par parallel kit uh, connections with a circuit breaker and a CO2 detect. So if you're running this in a enclosed space, which you shouldn't be, and it detects CO2, it's gonna shut down before it hopefully suffocates you. Um, moving on, we have our pull start cord. We have our switch for cold start. Basically that's choke, uh, run, and then storage and off. Um, overall, lots of cool stickers on it that talk about all the tech that it has, like the Bluetooth and the IGN app and all that. Um, moving over to the exhaust side, you can see your spark arrestor screen in there. That's serviceable, of course. And a lot of general information. So, but again, this thing looks really well built. Now I noticed the... So this is how, just kind of spin this around. This is how you access the internals of the gin that are mostly serviceable. You just have that and your whole panel comes off. That's actually pretty slick. I like how they did that. We have, um, let's see, we've got our valve cover, which I'm gonna be pulling. We're gonna take a look under there. We have our carburetor, lots of electronics and gizmos down in there. Looks like we've got our air filter. And we have our oil spout. So that's also, that's the fill and the drain, which is kind of interesting. Um, a spark plug, it's kind of buried up in there. It's one of the first things I always get rid of. Probably has a cheap torch spark plug that's just junk. Um, first thing to go, get rid of that. Get a proper iridium plug or fine wire electrode plug just so this thing will start easy. So we'll be checking that. But yeah, that is uh, kind of the first look of this generator. It did come with some initial break-in oil. It has no break-in procedure that I saw in the manual, so we're gonna run it for a half hour, partial load, and um, after that half hour, we're gonna drain the oil hot, even though the manual says don't do it hot, but uh, I always drain the oil hot on break-in. That way, it runs out a lot faster and hopefully takes any metal particulates with it when it runs out. Um, spark plug wrench came with it, and I think the only other comment I have, which I love that Ryobi does, is they've got the luggage handle. So we push that button and you actually get a luggage handle so that you can pick this thing up and haul it around. That is actually a really cool feature. It makes it really convenient to pull this thing around. It's kind of got nice larger um, rubber wheels back here. Really easy to lug around. So that's going to be it for right now. Let's start turning into more of this. <laughs> what have I done? It is in pieces so there she is i'm doing all the hard work because most of you guys aren't idiots like me and we'll take a brand new generator and tear it down to pieces just to make sure that you understand how it works i'm doing all that for you um one of the first things i noticed we'll just get this out of the way 
this is a Ducar built generator. Now, there are only a select number of manufacturers that actually make inverter generators and they private label them for everybody. And I always get a huge laugh out of this in the forums because all these people are squabbling my generator is better than your generator and everybody thinking they're better than everybody else because of whatever color generator they have. And in reality, it's all BS. So you've got Lonson generators like make Predator and some of the others. And you have a uh, Ducar that makes um, Ryobi. Guess who else they make? They make Westinghouse. They make Onan inverter generators. So the really popular 4,500 watt Onan inverter, that's made by Ducar. Same people that make Ryobi. Um, anyways, uh, long story short, in rant on that, I just love seeing people squabble though, thinking theirs is better than everybody else's just because of their brand or color. Uh, just funny um so yeah let's uh, get started on this so i disassembled the whole thing we've got a nice little inverter here it's all potted so let's see if we can get down there and see it um some of the components are no name some of them are good but uh, overall it looks decent so it's all in one package so the cylinder head it's about 80 cc's the cylinder head is actually all a part of the generator structure itself it's kind of that's how they make it so compact now you've got a uh, coil pack here. That's what actually fires your spark plug wire. You've got your um, carburetor here. I'll pull that out. I want to find out what main jet's in there so we can then make a recommendation if you're going to different altitude or high altitude, what that's going to look like. But I do got to get some hours on this generator before I make that recommendation to find out as it is, if it's going to run rich or lean at my current altitude. Um, let's see here. So again, all part of the body. Got a big exhaust system here, partially what makes it quiet. You've got a spark arrestor, and I noticed, uh, obviously, you need a clean spark arrestors on the regular, but the way they did the spark arrestor and the way they clamped this on makes it really difficult to get this little nut and clamp assembly off, so that's kind of stupid. Um, I don't like that. Let's see. Moving over here, I already took off the valve cover, and I did this uh, specifically because I didn't want the gasket to be stuck. Now, what I'm going to do prior to assembling this is I'm actually going to put a light coat of grease all the way around this gasket material. And that is going to prevent this from sticking to the cylinder head when it gets hot over time. That means I don't have to keep buying gaskets for this thing as I check uh, my valve clearance over time. So, which is recommended about every 300 hours. I think that's a good service interval. But it's a little push rod engine. So we're going to check clearances as well because I didn't find clearances online of what, what it is. So since this is brand new, I can measure and find out what the factory um gap is supposed to be for the valve clearance so we're gonna check that out and let's see what else do we got in here to talk about that may be about it so again it's a pretty nicely packaged together a little engine i really didn't see any major issues i found a few things i thought were kind of chintzy like for example that ground right there which is barely held on they used the wrong size eyelet that was kind of dumb but um uh, it's on there Got a fuel filter switch. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an overview. This is what your Ryobi generator looks like on the inside. For those who are afraid to tear it down, tear down is extremely easy. This was not a complicated product, just a lot of screws. Um, if you're going to tear your own down or you need to work on it, I'll just go through some of the tools that you need real quick. You needed a T15 uh, and a T20 uh, Torx. You needed a 3 millimeter uh, Allen head. I've got a 10 millimeter and an 8 millimeter uh, socket wrench and um, also nut drivers. And then I have a large number three Phillips screwdriver. That's really all I needed to tear this thing down. So uh, it comes apart really easy. Again, a really nice tidy package. Um, I'm liking what I see here. This little Ducar generator is pretty sweet. So um, that's it for right now. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You got to see the tear down. Well, the aftermath of the teardown and anybody that has any type of experience wrenching on anything this would be nothing to take apart it's for you guys so drill panels nice again this is where some manufacturers differentiate from others is they have a better control panel so this is all ryobi kind of specific stuff with this little digital fuel and gin control and their bluetooth and everything so every manufacturer's kind of got a different control panel but when you dig into it that you're going to find the guts are the same thing Holy crap, I've got this thing in a million pieces back here. 
and I've got to now figure out how to get it all back together. I don't think it's going to be a really big deal. Honestly, it won't. But I've got a lot of reassembly to do on this engine because I actually have to start it and make sure it works. Hopefully there's no factory defects because I'm going to be thinking I did something. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. But uh, yeah, I got to get this thing reassembled and I will catch you guys later. All right, guys, um, hope you enjoyed that. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. Subscribe if you like it. And upcoming and future videos, we'll be going through a lot more on the maintenance and so forth on this little gen. So I will catch you later.